and welcome back. Let's make this website a little bit prettier than it is now. And I'm going to introduce you to some CSS properties. Properties are, as the name suggests, properties that we want to change within a web page. And you might be asking yourself, how many properties are there? And as we did with the HTML section, I have a recommended resource for you. And that is CSS tricks. This website, anytime you Google any questions about CSS, most likely some of the top 10 answers are going to include something from this website. So I highly, highly recommend it, especially if you go to the menu and almanac. Because within this almanac, we have all the CSS properties listed on here. So anytime you have a question and you want to say, mm, what is justify content? Well, you can click on it and it will actually give you examples. You can play around with it and learn about the specific property. Just like with the HTML tags, although there are way more properties, you don't need to know all of them and memorize them because that's not realistic. That's not the best use of your time. We're going to focus on the ones that you'll encounter most often. And anytime you see new ones pop up while you're working, you can always look them up and learn about them because they're very, very simple to read into. So let's try a few of these. I'm going to start off with our style.css over here. And let's change a few things. We want to have our home be in the center of the web page. So let's start off with text align. And if I type in center and I save, my text is now centered. OK, we also want to add a border to this image. Border. And this is a little bit unique. You can do something like this. You can do five pixels, which is the size of the border, what style of border you want. So you can do dashed, and then the color of the border will do purple. So I save, refresh, and we have a border. You can also do solid, and if it's solid, it's a solid border. Okay, what else can we do? It'll be nice to have an image maybe an entire image for the website. So how do we do that? Well, the tag that we would want to apply it to is probably body. So if I go into body, and you might notice something here. As I'm creating these selectors, I'm going from top to bottom. The body, which is the parent of almost everything, is at the top. And as we get more and more specific, we trickle down to smaller elements. Again, we'll get into that in a later video, but just keep that in mind. Okay, so for body, it would be awesome to have a cool image on our website. So we can do background. And you can see that Sublime Text actually autofills or has some suggestions for us. And we can look through this and pick the one that we want. But based on the name, looks like we want background image. With background image, we want to specify a URL. In our case, I actually have on my desktop saved a nice little picture. And let's title it something simple like background image. And I got this from a website called Unsplash. If you haven't checked it out, they have a ton of high quality free images that you can use. So again, here we are referencing our, let's put this actually in here. So it's in our project folder. And then within our project folder, we can say that it is background image .jpg. So I save this, I refresh. And look at that. We have this image, but you can see that it's a big image and it doesn't fit the screen. So how can we do that? We can do background size cover. So if we do that and refresh, look at that. We have a beautiful background on our website. Okay, and let's say we want to remove these little dots next to our links. We can do that by going into, well, we want to change our li elements. So we go into style and we can put in here li and we'll do something called list style and we'll go none and refresh. And look at that. Those little pesky dots are gone. For about, whenever I select about, I want the cursor to not be this. I want to change the cursor to maybe have this little hand gesture. I like to call them Mickey Mouse hands. Okay, so we go into our H2 
and we can do something called cursor. And let's say you don't really know what properties cursor has, or you don't even know the property. You can go into CSS tricks and again, go to C, look at cursor, and you can kind of guess by the name what it does. And it tells you all the information you need to know, but you can see over here that they even have a demo of what you can do with cursors. So we want the pointer. So we can just put pointer here, save. Let's go back to our website, refresh, and look at that. We now have a pointer when we hover over about. Okay, and maybe the last change we wanna do is that we wanna make sure that our home, about, and login are on one line. This is a little awkward when they're stacked on top of each other. And we can do that by selecting, let's look over here. We wanna select our LIs and we can use something called display. And display has a few properties that you can use. One is block. And by default, this is actually already a block, but there is also something called inline block. And if I save this and I refresh, look at that, we have everything in line. Now, we want to change a few things here. We want to make sure that our colors are better than just purple and, and green and pink. And what if we want some specific color and we have a certain design that we want for our website? Well, colors are very, very interesting in CSS because there's a few ways that you can do them. And I want to show you one of my favorite websites for picking colors. What this website does, it actually gives you the colors that you can use along with a nice addition of what it will complement that color. So you can play around with this and change a bunch of criteria. You can click over here and see what color combinations work. But let's say we wanted to use something like this. And if you hover over and click, you'll see over here that I get a couple of numbers that we can use. So the first one is a hex number. So hex number has a hash and then the number associated with it. So I just copied it from the website. You see the number is a little bit different, but essentially they can use anything from zero to nine and then all the way to F, so A to F. And this represents a specific color. So if I copy this and let's make our color, let's make it the color of our header and save this and refresh, you'll see that our color changes. Okay, we also want the border again to complement the color. Let's do this border color. We also have something called RGB. And RGB, again, you see over here that there is a hex color and an RGB color. These are both the same color, so you can pick whichever one you want. In the case of an RGB color, you can do something like, say we want for our border, have RGB color of these values. So that is the value of red, green, and blue. So that's what RGB stands for, and we just wrap it like so. So now, if I save this and refresh, look at that, I have a nice little outline. Just to show you of what exactly I mean by red, green, and blue, if I set all of these to zero, so that means that red is in full force and green and blue are non-existent, if I save and refresh, that is red. If I change this to green, then that's in green effect. And you can imagine here that if I change the blue to 255 and everything else is zero, this will be blue. There you go. So let's go back here to what we had before because I like the other colors way better. So let's refresh, perfect. Now RGB lets you do one other cool thing and that is called RGBA and that is stands for alpha. You can actually set the opacity. So with the fourth number, you can actually do something between zero and one and one being, well, opaque and you can still see everything to zero where it's completely transparent. So let's do 0 0.5 here and you can see that there's a bit of a fade now in our color. Perfect. So Using a tool like this, you can really pick what colors you want your website to have and choose the one that complement each other well. 
I use this website a lot when creating new websites and thinking of color templates to use. It's a really, really good resource. And you can use hex and RGB, whichever one you want. Just uh, it's good to have some consistency. If you want to add some opacity, so the alpha, this last number, then definitely use RGBA. Okay, so going back here, our website is starting to look somewhat okay. But in the next section, I want to talk a little bit about selectors and more things that we can do with them. I'll see you on that one.